Hello everybody and welcome back to the Prevention Convention where we talk about all things related to the HIV community. We're going to crush stigma and work together to end the HIV epidemic together. I'm your host Jessica and I work for Hope House Memphis right here in Memphis, Tennessee. And if you missed any of our previous videos, uh, feel free to check them out on our YouTube page at Hope House Memphis. Uh, we're also available on Instagram and Facebook under the handle Hope House Memphis. And check out our website as well at hopehousememphis.org. Um, and now that you have all of our connect, uh, connection information, uh, why don't we get into some knowledge? Because as we know, knowledge is power. So let's get it. So we've learned from prior conventions that treatment for HIV is very influential in reducing viral loads, improving health, and reducing the possibility of transmitting the virus from one person to another. But how are these treatments paid for? Especially since we know that the majority of individuals impacted by HIV are those living in low income areas. They just can't afford the medications on their own, right? So, I've actually received numerous questions about this particular topic. Um, how do you afford HIV treatment and medical coverage? Well, first of all, without any coverage whatsoever, medical treatment from going to your medical providers, at home medical visits, um, getting labs done, taking antiretrovirals, etc., these things can rack up. It can be as cheap as $1,000 a month and as expensive as $5,000 or more, depending on the medications that you are taking. So that's astronomical, right? That's, it's, like, it's insane, right? So thankfully, there is a program in place that can cover the cost of these medications and medical visits and lab visits, etc. And this program is called the Ryan White Care Program. And we're going to talk about that today. So, who is Ryan White anyway? So, let me take you back to the 1980s. Picture it. Kokomo, Indiana, 1984. Ryan White, a young male who is 13 years old, is living with a blood disorder called hemophilia. Um, at the age of 13, he received a blood transfusion, and through this blood transfusion, he acquired the HIV virus. Um, at the time, he was only expected to live about six months, but he surprised everyone by living five years past his diagnosis. He actually passed away at the age of 18, one month before he was supposed to graduate high school. And Ryan only wanted to be a normal kid. He wanted to be able to go to school, spend time with his friends, um, have a job, maybe um, date on the side. Uh, but once the town found out about his virus, it was anything but easy. Um, when Ryan actually went back to school, he was met with a petition for his, um, I guess, release from the school. He was expelled. They wanted him to be expelled from the school because um, parents and teachers were afraid that his presence being in the school would um, cause others uh, in the school to contract the HIV virus as well. So this was around the time when there was a lot of ignorance and a uh, little information about HIV and understanding about HIV. Um, but at the time it was known that HIV was an airborne. So there was some knowledge about that, but people were still afraid. There's still a lot of stigma, a lot of fear, and um, nobody wanted to contract the virus. So they decided to get rid of the source, which was Ryan. Um, so Ryan and his parents did use the court's legal options to get Ryan back in schools. And yes, he won. Um, but parents continued to protest. They continued to pull their children out of school. And while in school, Ryan was forced to do things to protect others around him, like eating off paper plates and using plastic utensils, um, using separate bathrooms. Um, they were berate ryan and his family in the town when he was outside of the school as well um they couldn't go anywhere in the town without somebody saying something or um talking about them um so people in the town were spreading rumors about ryan being a gay male saying that hiv is a gay male's disease therefore ryan must be gay which wasn't true um there's also the belief that ryan deserved to contract the virus because it was a punishment from god 
like his family was just cursed and they were just deemed uh, to contract the virus because of something that he may have done, which also was not true. Um, they received a lot of harassment, a lot of um, ignorant phone calls and threatening phone calls, as well as violent visits to their homes uh, where rocks were thrown, guns were shot, and slurs were shouted at their home. Um, it was at that point that Ryan and his parents decided the home wasn't safe anymore, the town wasn't safe, and they decided to pick up and leave um, to go to uh, Cicero, Indiana. Um, and in Cicero, they were ready for him. They welcomed Ryan with open arms into their school. Yes, there was some hesitation, some fear, but um, a young lady on the student council actually decided to get experts to come into the school and educate the students as well as the teachers. And that was great because these students were learning all about HIV, how it's transmitted, learning all about Ryan's diagnosis, and then they were taking that information back home to their parents and sharing the information there. So the town was more open uh, with Ryan and were more accept accepting of his diagnosis, which was fantastic. So while things were a little bit more normal in Cicero, Indiana, the fight was far from over. Um, Ryan and his family continued to fight for equality for those living with HIV and AIDS, uh, especially for those who are trying to be in the school system um, in Indiana. Um, and Ryan, you know, he didn't really want all that attention. All he wanted to do was to be a normal teenager, to go to school, to have friends, to have a part-time job, and eventually go to college. Um, but Ryan's story became so powerful, it took over the media. So. Uh, his story was seen in newspapers, it was seen all over the news, and even celebrities caught wind of his stories. And Ryan eventually became the poster child for those living with HIV and AIDS. Um, his story became a catalyst to change the face of HIV from a stereotypical gay male's disease to an illness that can impact almost anybody. Although Ryan would pass away at the age of 18 in the early 1990s, his parents would continue his legacy to fight for the rights of those that are living with HIV and AIDS. In fact, several months after Ryan passed away in 1990, Congress passed the Ryan White Care Act in his honor. And this is a federally funded program to provide care and supportive services to those living with HIV and AIDS who cannot afford their medical care coverage. Because of Ryan White, individuals living with HIV can now receive affordable medical care and medications every month without worrying about the high cost of antiretroviral medications. They also have access to free or affordable mental health services, such as support groups and individual counseling. Uh, they can also receive access to food pantries and nutritional services, um, home health help, community health care services, housing and homelessness programs, substance abuse treatments, rental and utility assistance, transportation assistance for appointments, and even translation services for those who do not speak the language of their agency. Um, they may also have some assistance for childcare, uh, such as what's offered here at Hope House. Hope House is also a daycare center for ages zero to five years of age. Um, they are, um, the Ryan White program can also offer case management services, such as medical adherence, um, job training and financial assistance, and also dental care as well. So that sounds like quite a bit, right? Even though these are great services that are offered for the HIV community, um, it can be hard to navigate some of this or to remember what you qualify for. But that's okay because everybody that qualifies for Ryan White is assigned a case manager to help you navigate the system and to help you apply for any of these services that you might need. Um, to be eligible for the Ryan White program, you must be diagnosed with HIV or AIDS. Uh, you must be considered to have low income or no income or have either no health insurance or health insurance that does not cover your care for the HIV diagnosis. If you or someone you know needs to be connected to Ryan White Services, please contact your local medical provider or HIV testing center. Uh, you can also always contact me using my information listed below.
Um, or you can also contact a Ryan White provider by using the Greater Than AIDS um, website that will link you to a provider closest to you. I'll provide that link for you below as well. So while Ryan White is a huge federally funded program for those living with HIV, there are other payment programs available to those living with HIV and AIDS. Um, some programs can be covered by Medicare and Medicaid. Um, there are patient assistance programs available as well where pharmaceutical companies will reduce costs or provide free medications to those who cannot afford it. Um, there's also the CHIP program that provides um, affordable HIV coverage for those who are 19 and under. It is a federally funded program. Um, and also um, programs for vulnerable populations such as veterans and um, those cultural groups that don't have a whole lot of access to services such as the American Indians and Alaskan Natives. So these are also great options that you can look into if you're seeking assistance for those living with HIV and AIDS. But please talk to your local provider for additional information. Or again, as usual, please feel free to contact me at the information listed below. But that is it for me today. I'm so happy that you joined me on today and I hope you enjoyed everything that we talked about. I hope to convene with you again soon and just remember that knowledge is power. All right. See you later. Bye.